Want to have your clip featured in the Skyrim Clip of the Week? Simply record the clip on your Xbox and then send it to me via message. My gamertag is iryeni, that's I-R-Y-E-N-I, and then you can message it to me over Xbox and I'll be able to view it. I look forward to seeing the clips that you guys send me. Now moving on to the video. Hey, what's up guys? It's Ryan and welcome back to another episode of Modded Monday. We're on week number 191 now, guys. I've picked out five new mods for you guys to check out and perhaps add them to your load order if you find them interesting. But like always, before we jump into them, I want to remind you guys that I'm partnered with Gamersups, which in my opinion is the best energy drink on the market. Now, I myself used to drink unhealthy gas station energy drinks, but switched whenever I heard about Gamersups being the healthier choice and alternative. Since then, I've been drinking it regularly, so I reached out and got in contact with them so that we could show you guys the drink and you can try it free if you'd like. If you use my link in the code found in the description, which is RTD, you can get a 10% discount on all their drinks. And if you do end up trying it, definitely let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Now we can jump into this week's mods, and starting us off we have the Pocket Crossbow mod. Now this mod introduces a one-handed crossbow. It's crafted and uses any standard crossbow bolt, whether it be steel, dwarven, fire, ice, and shock, and you can aim down the sights if your left hand is empty. The controls are similar to the guns in the Drifter's arsenal, and it's planned to be updated if more people enjoy the mod. Now starting us off with a simple mod like this, I feel as though it would be perfect for any type of assassin character that you have, because if you have a dagger in your right hand and you're just walking around and just, you know, slitting throats and trying to be quiet, if you do come across two enemies at once and you have to take them both down, you can shoot one with a crossbow and then take one out with the dagger, or vice versa. There really isn't that many means of taking out someone silently with a one-handed weapon, especially if it's ranged, because of course you have spells and stuff that are ranged, but they're so loud and they just give away your position. But with the pocket crossbow, you won't have to use a two-handed bow, you can just use your one-handed crossbow along with your dagger, and you can now have a ranged attack as well as a close attack. There's so many different scenes that I can play out in my head here that would look absolutely badass, especially the one whenever you're going through and trying to assassinate the Emperor. There's so many cool executions and little ways of taking out the guards that I can just think of in my head, so with the pocket crossbow, the world is yours in terms of taking people out silently. And don't even get me started if you try to dual wield them, because it's absolutely devastating. So if you're playing through as an assassin character, or you maybe just like the idea of a pocket crossbow and want to add it to your character, then I'd strongly recommend downloading it and giving it a try for yourself, and that's why it's featured here at a number 5 spot, so I'd recommend making some room on your load order for the pocket crossbow mod. Coming in at our number 4 spot, we have the Vanilla Tweaks Audio Refresh mod. Now it's actually been a very long time since I covered mods such as the Sounds of Skyrim and other mods that do similar things, so I thought I'd take a revisit down this track, and it actually seems that the Sounds of Skyrim just keep getting better and better. With this Vanilla Tweaks Audio Refresh mod, it adjusts many of the vanilla sound effects, music tracks, animals, miscellaneous objects, and UI volume levels for a varied and less redundant experience. The changes are extensive and are as follows. It disables the location discovery music and the combat music except for bosses and dungeon music, as well as Dragon Soul and Ward of Power music. It also mutes most of the UI sounds, new quests and updates are muted, the level up sound is muted, there's quieter perks, a quieter map, a quieter new game start, mod selection screen clicks, and all aspects of alchemy, smithing, and enchanting are quieter, but the things that have gotten a lot louder include waterfalls and rapids, birds are louder depending on the time and day and region, most crickets are quieter depending on the time of day, frogs are louder, there's louder bat flaps, louder steam pools, and odd mystical bird tree sounds have been muted. Nern roots are now much quieter, bears, cows, saber cats, mammoths, and werewolves are much louder, foxes are nearly silent, wolves and skeevers are much quieter, and then all the remaining changes to sound include fire being blazing now, torches burn heavier, fire spells are louder, weapon draw, sheaths, and swings are much quieter. But I don't want to just sit here and tell you all the sounds that have been changed, let's walk around Riverwood and actually get a listen to some of these new sounds.
Now with a mod like this changing so many different sounds and making it feel so much more immersive and realistic in the world, all of it coming in at 237.65 kilobytes is just a steal in terms of memory in your load order. You know, this is such a small mod compared to most overhauling sound mods, and this is a very good overhauling sound mod as well, so if you are running low on space in your load order, this is definitely a mod I'd recommend checking out. In the end, we just want our Skyrim to feel alive and real, and with the Vanilla Tweaks audio refresh, we're just one step closer to that, and that's definitely why it's featured here at our number four spot. Spot, so I strongly recommend downloading it and giving it a try for yourself. Coming in at our number 3 spot we have a new crazy player home dungeon called the Egyptian Palace of Amarna. Now the mod page reads that this is an ancient Egyptian palace player home slash city with storage chests, beds, and chairs. There's high level dungeons, new weapons, items, and vast treasures and secrets. Now with ancient Greek temple shrine world areas. It's also said that this player home and temple city is loosely based on the ancient Egyptian city of Amarna. Amarna was a religious capital of a pharaoh and his famous queen and the pharaoh decided to shun the traditional gods of Egypt and worship only one god, the Sun Disk. He built an entirely new city to escape his old ways and priests, and here we are. There's many beds, storage chests, and many secret rooms and chambers, and two high-level dungeons with vast treasure and unique loot at the end. You can explore the temples and palaces and even go inside the Great Pyramid, which has a design loosely based on the real thing. They tried to go for a more fantasy-like take on Egypt without sacrificing too much of its history. To get to this location, you go through a portal in Riverwood, and you'll see an Egyptian door with a vase nearby. And like I said, this is a new unique player home that comes with powerful new weapons, Egyptian-style music, new loot, high-level dungeons, hidden chambers and secrets, and vast treasure. So why wouldn't you want a mod like this? It's a new area to explore, and a player home that you can take over at the end after you've done exploring all of the dungeons. So it's just an all-around great mod, and definitely a place that looks so much different than any other area in Skyrim. So if you want to take a break from the original green Skyrim, and want to take a trip over to Egypt, then the Egyptian Palace of Armana is definitely a mod I'd recommend checking out. Out. Coming in at our number two spot, we have a new amazing and awesomely fun all-in-one mod called Skyrim Wars. Now this mod adds new armor and weapons in the game from the Star Wars films, and allows you to use the Force now. It also turns the Civil War in Skyrim into a galactic war. The Empire is now dressed in Stormtrooper uniforms and the General's Darth Vader, and most of the Stormcloaks are now dressed in Jedi clothes from the Jedi and Sith Armors mod. You also have a chance to spawn lightsabers from the Magicka Sabers mod. So this is basically an all-in-one of a bunch of different Star Wars mods combined into one big mod. And all of these armors and weapons, as well as a couple bonus outfits, can be crafted and tempered at a forge. It's also required to do a hard reboot of your game whenever you download this mod because it just changes so much from the get-go. And at the start of the game, once your hands are free, you should check your inventory to find both Jedi and Sith clothes and a couple spell tomes to get you started. Some of these include the spells such as Chain Lightning and the Force, as well as Telekinesis that you can use to pull enemies closer to you. There's so much to do and so many ways to have fun with this mod installed, whether you want to just go into the Galactic War and actually fight with the Stormtroopers against the Jedis, or if you want to take a different route and just craft a bunch of lightsabers yourself and go into battle, you can do that too. So if you've been playing Skyrim seriously over the past couple weeks, you may want to take a break from that and maybe add something that'll just make it a lot more fun and maybe not as lore friendly, then the Skyrim Wars is definitely a mod I'd recommend checking out, especially if you're a Star Wars fan, of course. And even if you aren't a fan of Star Wars, I still would recommend downloading this mod because it's still fun to just mess around with the different things that have been added by the mod. And with it adding all of these new features and only coming in at 144.35 megabytes, it's definitely a perfect mod to add to any load order, and that's why it's featured here at our number two spot, so I strongly recommend downloading the Skyrim Wars mod. Coming in at our number one spot, we have a huge all-in-one collection mod, and that's the Clever Charves collection mod. This is an all-in-one collection of all of the mods that Clever Charfs has done so far, and this includes Castle Volokar, The Caves, Dawn Guard, Farmhouses and Farm Towns, Forgotten Vale, Forts and Dungeons, High Hrothgar, Markarth and the Dwemer Ruins, Mountains, Mines, Nordic Ruins, Raven Rock, Riften, Skyhaven, Solitude, and I can just keep going on and on. Whether I go down to Whiterun, Windhelm, Winterhold, Locks, Smelters, Ash Piles, I could go on for ages, guys. There's so many different things that have been remastered 
remastered with this Clever Charfs All-in-One Collection mod that I feel as though we could put it on a pedestal up with Skyland All-in-One mod. You know, I covered that a long time ago, and it's also one of the staple mods in most of my load orders, the Skyland All-in-One mod, and I'm not saying this Clever Charfs is better than Skyland All-in-One, but I would say it's on the same scale, you know, they do kind of remaster the same areas, and you can't really have one and the other at the same time, but you know, if you are remastering your Skyrim and you want to go for the Skyland look, you can take a look at that, but if you want to take a different approach and go with the Clever Charfs look, which is a completely different look from Skyland, you know, just pick your preference on which one you'd like. Because both of these are all in one mods, so you really aren't going to need any other graphics mods or, you know, anything that goes above and beyond in terms of graphics because you're already throwing a gig of modding space into your load order. So you don't want to use so much other space, you know, covering graphics that have already been covered. Now, as you can see, all of these new remastered cities look absolutely amazing. And this isn't just the city overhauls that we're talking about here. This also covers caves and mountains and many different areas outside of the major cities. So whether you're trading inside of the towns or spending a night at the inn or maybe traveling traveling outside and doing some exploring in Skyrim, all of the textures as you walk around those areas are going to be completely new and remastered textures, and that's all thanks to Clever Charfs All-in-One Collection mod, and that's why it's featured here at our number one spot, so I strongly recommend downloading it and looking at all these new remastered textures for yourself. So that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the top five Skyrim mods of the week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you're new. It really helps me out a lot. And if you have any suggestions for mods you'd like me to cover in future top five mod episodes, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Or you can follow me on Twitter. I'll be sure to leave my Twitter in the description and you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions there as well. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for everything that you guys have done for me. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy and I will talk to you guys later.